All right, buenos dias, clase. Welcome to our yellow e-learning day. Um, it is the 19th, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, first things first, if you have not taken the pretest that was located in today's lesson, which is lesson 10, then go ahead and do that now. It's not for a grade. You will not be penalized. You can literally do terrible, but I want you to at least try because I want to show how much we have learned after we actually learn the material and take another test. I'll show you that, hey, you got a 20% on this, and now you got an 87. So it's just for some little data. So I want you to try, uh, but it's just going to be a quick uh, multiple choice. Make sure you take that. All right, so a couple of announcements before we get going here. A reminder for your tarea. Uh, remember we did that chart from Thursday, Friday's lesson, which is lesson nine, uh, where you had to fill out the future or conditional tenses um, according to the word given in the subject. Make sure that you get that done because I am going to check it, and we will review it next class period. Um, and then the other thing is our upcoming test, which is May 4th and 5th, depending on your block period, uh, which isn't for a couple weeks, but just want to give you a reminder that it is incoming. Now, for today's lesson, there is, uh, we're going to be learning por y para, which again have been in the word wall, but we're going to learn them. Now, there is no one translation for these words. They are chameleons, which means they can be used in lots of different contexts. There is no word for word. You have to read it, understand it. What is it trying to say? So, uh, we're going to go through a handout here that's going to help you understand a little bit. But the big thing here is context, context, context. So if we look at this handout here, I'm going to quickly kind of go through now look at the blue column and you can see that these are all the reasons when we'd use por, which it is the larger of the two versus para is short and sweet. So por has a lot of reasons and you can see the model. So some reasons that you would, for, uh, meaning they both translate to for, but por can be used in a variety of ways. So when you want to express gratitude or apology, thanks for this, you would use por. Um, and multiplication division, two times two equals four. The times there is going to be bored. Uh, talking about how often frequency, velocity, and proportion, I go to the restaurant five times per week. Meaning uh, when it means through a long buyer in the area of like, we walked by the park, we walked through the park, we walked along the park. In English, we have all these different words. In Spanish, just use bored. Um, an exchange or sales, like he gave me $10 for the book. Or I'll give you two donuts for uh, a glass of milk, something like that. Um, meaning on behalf of or in favor for. A lot of times like, oh, I'm on behalf of that law. Or I'm in favor for changing the idea. Or, um, whoops, I forgot my, I didn't vote for anyone. Whoops. Uh, to express length of time, I studied for two hours. Um, or he went to school for nine years. Express an undetermined amount of time. Uh, you, meaning like during. Uh, during my time in college, I learned a lot. Mistaken identity, they take me for crazy. Uh, por, when meaning like how you appear in some way. A uh, reason for an errand, um, I will come get you by eight o'clock. Paso por ti, the reason for going is for you, an object or person. Uh, to express the cause of something, the man died for lack of food, or this can also mean due to, like due to... Uh, the amount of rain we got, there is flooding. And then a star plus por, meaning there's a reason, uh, meaning I'm in the mood for something, estoy por, or passive voice, uh, meaning the book was written by, uh, the trash was taken out by, when it's something by. Not he wrote the book, but the book was written by. Now, we have all these idiomatic expressions. We're not going to talk about them too much today because there is a lot of them. They're mostly just there for reference. Now, whew, that was a lot. Poor is our longer one. Now, our shorter and easier one is para. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, siete, ocho. Hay ocho razones. There are eight reasons for using para. To indicate destination, the man left for Spain. Uh, we have el hombre salió para España. We have um, to show the use or purpose of an object. The glass is for water. Uh, for water, agua, meaning in order to or the purpose of, like in order to get a good grade, you have to study a lot, or um, in order to make a paella, uh, you first have to saute the meats. Um, to indicate the recipient, the gift is for you, the flowers are for you, uh, the timeout is for this team. To express a deadline, like the paper is due on Tuesday, or I need the dress by Monday. That's a great one too. To express a contrast. Now, unfortunately, this can really fall into stereotypes. Like people could say things like, oh, for a doctor, meaning he should be smart, he's really dumb. Or uh, for a child, this isn't a stereotype, this is just common knowledge. For a child, he reads well, meaning usually as a child, it's 
you know, they're still learning. To show employment where you work, I work for the university. I work uh, for a medical device company. And then lastly, a star plus para means the train is about to leave. El train está para salir, meaning it's about to happen. Now, I am going to link this handout. Uh, you probably won't use much of this section right here, mostly just the two sections of um, reasons, but I'm going to link this in today's activity um, on the assignment that you have to do, the little quiz that is for an accuracy grade. Um, but that will be linked for today for you to use as a reference. So two examples of what you're going to do in today's assignment. Um, it says post lesson examples. So this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to give you an English sentence. And according to what the English sentence says, you're going to use the handout, this one here, and look at those reasonings in the blue or in the yellow to decide which one it should be replaced with if it was in Spanish. So for example, it says, I work for the government and have great benefits. So working for something or someone, we always use para. So that is our reason right there. The second one says, thanks for coming to the show, which is gracias por venir al show. Now, again, on the examples, you're not going to have the Espanol. You're just going to have the English, which I think is easier for right now. But thanks for coming to something. Anytime you're showing gratitude or appreciation, you use the word por. So you're literally just going to choose por or para. So that is it for today's Unit 4, Lesson 10, Yellow Day, which is the 19th. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out on me. Uh, so remember, you should be doing the pre-lesson test, the pre-test over poor and par when you know nothing and it's not for a grade, then you're going to watch this video. And then lastly, after this, you're going to be completing your actual actual lesson of choosing por or para. So hope that makes sense. Gracias. See you guys soon.